Alright, that's got to be one of the weirdest looking boards you've seen, but if you're somebody who does electronics like this often and works on TVs and stuff, probably nothing big. So, to most people that do that, it's not really special. So, why is this one special? Well, this is a very weird board that came from a very weird place. So, you guys ever go to Best Buy or like the GameStop and they have those displays for like the headsets and speakers and stuff? Well, Antec Lansing, which is a company that makes Bluetooth speakers and headsets and wired versions as well, came to a company named Spectos, which shows on there, to have a retail display built to show off some of their headsets. And this right here is the main board from one of their three headset, three speaker displays. Sadly, I only have three of the headsets and two of the speakers, but either way, this still works. So I've got all the electronics, but not the physical box. So I figured for most people, they would want a deep dive on this kind of stuff. So that's what we're gonna look at today. All right, so first of all, we have six audio jacks across the top which would make sense because this thing will be communicating with a wide range of speakers and headsets. This guy right here. Let's take a look at this. So, from the jacks, the ports, your brain's telling you this is a Bluetooth headset. We've got the USB in for power. We've got our power button up and down. But then you've got this cord coming off of it. And this has a 3.5 mil audio jack and a USB. And at first I was a little confused, but this all makes sense when we look at the next part of this. This guy needs power. And there's nowhere on this board that sends power. But that's where this guy comes in. Here we have the USB power distribution board, if you will. And it also has a... DC 12 volt in and a DC 12 volt out. I'm going to be honest, I did not know which was which when I did this. I like started going into it and figuring out how it goes together. But I think anybody could use common sense and understand that the traces are going over to these caps and this power, this whole power delivery system here. And so this actually steps down the voltage to. 5 volts DC on the USBs and obviously we've got more different power outputs here we read this some of them are 12 volt these two right here are 12 volt DC outputs so that would just go up and then straight through whereas these ones would go through the conversion to 5 volt then we have one last board that goes with all this and that is this one so this one does not actually say anywhere what kind of voltages it's using. I know it takes 12 volts in, obviously, but I don't know what it's outputting. So we're actually going to use a cheap multimeter live on here, and we're going to figure out what this outputs with the multimeter. I'll just probe these two really quick. I'm going to go here and click her on. Set her to DC volts. And let's get a reading. And so, yep, it looks like we are outputting exactly just 12 volts. But this one actually powers the three speakers it would have had. So I can go over here, grab this speaker, and we have a little Antec Lansing Bluetooth speaker. It's got your little buttons up here. This one doesn't have anything in there. This is just, there's nothing in there. It's just dummy rubber. But out the bottom, we have our audio jack and our input for power. So now we're going to look at some of the cords that make this all happen. So first of all, we'll go over kind of what all this does. Um, I should have put a picture earlier of what the display might have looked like. I know it isn't the exact same, but it is one that's very similar to it made by Spectos. 
but all of them use these buttons here. These are just your standard white buttons, and obviously they're going to connect to these ports here, so we can start messing with that in a second. But I just wanted to show you guys what these buttons look like as sort of a reference, and then we've got these four pin headers that are big enough for these ones, but small enough that they won't go into any other four pin headers and mess anything up. Next up, this thing was cut right out of the wall. So it just has this power cord that also says DC 12 volt along the wire. And so we're going to have the power going into a DC 12 volt splitter. Once again, this all came with all these electronics. So you got your quote unquote power coming in, goes into the splitter, and one end is going to go into the main board itself. And the other end we're going to have go into the power side of the 12 volt to 5 volt distribution block. And then we have a or DC 12 volt um, barrel jack cable. Not really a fan of these mail to mail cables, but either way it does the job. And there we go. We've got our basic little loop here. Okay, so now we've got some basic things plumbed up to this. Really quick, we'll go here and power our speaker. And we're just going to choose the first port on there. And then we'll send our audio to one of these jacks. And then we can give this thing power and we should see some results. So right away, the buttons will turn on. And I could start playing music from our Alltech speaker right here. So I wonder if I can zoom out to show a bit more of this wiring. So this thing would literally just play music out of any source that was hooked into it. As far as I've done from looking into it and playing with it, the ports appear to go 1 to 4 and then from 5 to 8. And same with this 1 to 6. Your buttons, you can just press them to play the music. Now, obviously, I'm not going to fully go through and to show you every song um, that would copyright strike me but for what was on here it was mainly Maroon 5 songs and a couple other things from around 2018 to 2020 and some older ones but as you probably heard some of you that know Metal Gear's Rising probably just freaking shit your pants because you heard the beginning of one of the songs I figured out how to put my own music on this. The SD card on here is very rudimentary. Um, it has some WAV files named in order of what songs it would play, and some basic TXT files that it actually reads to configure this thing. And I will have all of the I guess sort of config files, they're not really, there's text files with a couple things in them in a Google Drive in the description, if anybody's really interested. I know this is a very, like, short and dumbed-down demo, but I figured that some of you would get some interest out of knowing how a lot of those displays for your headphones and all that work. I've never seen buttons like these ones. They remind me a lot of the uh, arcade stick buttons. And that's probably what I'll end up using them for. Honestly, this thing doesn't really have any use outside of retail. I was making this video, though, to see if there's anybody that knows about them. We've got, obviously, like, some stuff that's unused here. We have two ports that are unused. A couple of these go unused. Got another one down here. We have an audio jack here that I have not figured out anything for. It doesn't output audio, so I'm wondering if it's, like, a debug port or something. But we've also tried sending audio into it, and it does nothing. Then there is a 8-pin sort of chip header here. And the unit was not damaged or touched in any way. It was just 
took it out of the display, and here's how it sits. This is everything that was on there except for one bigger speaker that just couldn't be unbolted from the physical display.